This will be taken to the back of the end zone. Freeman, the lone man in the backfield. He'll get the football here. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pick. Before and it'll bring up second down. And the D line pinching together must be expecting the run. In motion, right is Robinson. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he's swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. Only a yard in the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Call it a gain of five, fourth down now. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. And in their own territory, needing only a few inches, they're going to line up to go for this thing on fourth down. Here's Coleman on the toss. And an alley to run. The 40. The 20. Touchdown, Falcons. Kevin Coleman, 65 yards. And the Falcons have taken the early lead. You talk about explosion plays, there's one pretty much right out of the gate. And now they get to ride a wave of emotion, momentum, everything. Just as you, just as you described, right out of the gate, big sprint, touchdown, they're excited. But on the other side, they've got to guard against a major letdown because they hit them right in the gut with that one. And now you start to question yourself a little bit when you give up a touchdown on the opening drive. run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Here comes the D swarming to the line. Freeman, the lone man in the backfield. He's going to get the football. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. They still need eight yards for the first here on second down. This is Coleman. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. When I watch plays like that, I give a lot of thanks that my DNA did not make me an offensive tackle because that is a very difficult job to hold your block against a really good defensive end and hang on to it so your runner can get to the edge and do it without holding. I don't know that that's really possible for very many people. And the wideout in motion. On third down, Ryan. 
He's going to hit his man out of the backfield complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Seven yards on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. And how about the call here? They need two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. In motion left goes Jones. Here's Ryan to throw. He goes underneath to Freeman. Call it a pickup of seven, and they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. I know they got the first down, but Brandon, I still don't like the call going for it there. Yeah, yeah they got it. But I would have punted the ball there, played some field position. I mean, it's okay to end drives and kicks, right? You know, the, we've heard that from different guys before. Remember, it kicks either a punt, right? Field goal, or a point after touchdown. It's okay to end it in a kick. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Second and five. Shift together here from the D line. Ryan leaves with Freeman on the draw. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that plan any down. Fresh set of downs here. In motion right is Jones. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And he motions the wide receiver. On second down, Freeman. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. From the gun, on third down, Ryan. And this is going to be intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. Oh, well, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. They'll start out on the ground with Coleman. And some room to maneuver. And he's going to cut it back right. Touchdown, Falcons! Kevin Coleman with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Falcons are able to show off their quick strike ability. And with that carry, he's already over 100 yards here in the first half. And partner, you know exactly what he's saying to his teammates. Now here's Bryant to kick it away. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. And it's picked off. All right, Brandon. Normally when you hear about guys making two interceptions in the game, you're thinking must be a free safety, maybe a corner. How about getting two picks out of one of your linebackers? Again, he's just in the right place at the right time. That's another great play to come away with the football. Here's Ryan. He's going to float this. Oh, this is caught inside the 15. Touchdown, Falcons. Aldrich Robinson, 47 yards. 
And the Falcons will add on for a touchdown. And since he caught that one and scored it, I got to tell the story. Before the game, we were standing there. He was running deep routes, dropped one. It bounced up and just hit me right in the gut. And I said, come on, man. But there, there was no drop. Yeah, you okay now? I'm good. All right, I'm good. good. We got the ice pack up here. You're, you're just fine. What I loved about it was the subtlety of the route because everyone knows he's fast. They're going to play him for that route first and foremost. But sometimes it's a head fake. It's varying your speed off the line of screen. Image. It's giving the defensive back different angles to think about. Is he going inside? Is he going outside? And then, as you noted, he just took off past him. Oops. There he goes again. And they'll bring the big tight end across the formation left. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And this is Gabriel on the catch. 26 yards on the pickup there. And the Falcons are going to get a first. On first down, Ryan. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Second down following the incompletion. 21. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Let's go. Jones will come now in motion right. Ryan. Throw here's incomplete. He was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time. And it'll bring up third down. And that one was knocked away. And I think the defender's going to be a little upset with themselves. They made the play on the football. But that one felt like a forced pass by the quarterback. Thought he had someone open. He really wasn't. Maybe an example of having too much confidence in his receiver that no matter what, I'm going to throw it to him. And that was a play made by the defense. And it could have been a bigger one. Five yards on the pickup, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. In motion left, Robinson. Ryan. Just keeping the play alive. And Robinson with a big catch. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. It'll be a gain of 15 on the play. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. He's got time, buying time to his left, and finding the tight end, Hooper. 12 yards on the pickup, and it'll give the Falcons a first down. Sometimes it's designed, and sometimes you just have to know when to leave the pocket and move and make something happen. And on that play, he was able to get on the run and was still accurate throwing the football. They go play action here on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it. Now the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Ryan will throw again. Steps away to his left. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Julio Jones. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons cut into that lead. And he moved left there, Charles. Little danger play. He didn't throw toward that left side. Went over the middle. Got the six, though. Yeah, he seems like the type of guy that when you told him as a kid, don't touch the stove because it might be hot, he touched it anyway. And this one, he got away without getting burned. And 
Atlanta now coming out on the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. If <laughs> you love pressure, we'll, I love we'll it. see if they dial it up this drive. They'll run it now out of the gun. It's a gain of a yard, and it takes us to the two-minute warning. Now the Falcons going to use another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On third down, Ryan. And he's got Sanu. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And fits the exact right word. Over the middle, there's almost always traffic. So anytime you're a receiver in that area, you're not just focused on catching the football. You're wondering where the collision's going to come from, right? Because there's almost always someone there able to concentrate, catch it, and even added a little extra D end with a short run. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. two and we get a signal and a timeout it's just their first so they'll have two remaining here before we get to Ryan now off the bootleg flushed out right now he's going to throw deep right side and it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit. And that hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. First and ten, it's Ryan. And, oh, he took that in one-handed. What a grab. They'll get 16 yards there. And the Falcons are going to get a first. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Now Ryan on first down. Escaping the pressure right. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw in that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. Going underneath, it's Coleman. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. Trying to get it to Robinson, and it's intercepted. It's Desmond Trufant, and his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. And that one goes incomplete. They tried something out of the bag of tricks, but it's incomplete and now second down. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. 
They'll come up now in the Wildcat package. On the direct snap, Freeman. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. And no press coverage here. They are backing off in the secondary. Fights off another. I think the second tackler would have won. Now, my apologies, Larry. I wanted to hear the report. Somebody's in a hurry. So we're going to get them right to quarter number three. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. So out come the Falcons now. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this You're is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. Let's we'll see if that script is a good one for them. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. So second and ten here. And he goes in motion here in the backfield. Second and ten now. Ryan. And it's complete to Jacob Tammy. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And quickly, they get to the line. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away at its second down. I know that interception was dropped, and it would have been their third of the game, and I will guarantee you, in the huddle, on the bench, all the defensive guys have been talking about is, we've got this guy right where we want him. Who's going to get the next one? It almost becomes a challenge, and they've missed a golden opportunity. Being chased out left. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be third down. Offense coming up, needing two yards on third down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Looks like a nickel set here defensively on third and two. Well, maybe expecting a throw. Here's Ryan to throw. It's caught. Jones. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. That is caught inside the five. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. And the offense moving quickly to the line. From the four-yard line, it's first and goal now. Now it's Freeman. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. Every team we ever talk to that continues to run the ball in a game, even when they haven't had much success, all talks about attrition, don't they? If you keep running it, eventually good things are likely to happen. It's been a hard go in this game today, hasn't it? Yeah, this defense, they met pretty much. And he will take it in for a Falcon touchdown. Tevin Coleman taking it in from two yards out. And the Falcons draw a bit closer. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments. Let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. End result, touchdown. We take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And the interception thrown in the red zone last time. We'll see if they can rebound. I just have to think the last thing he said as they went back out there was, don't do that again. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think that. I think that not only did he say that, 
but he also told him, let's put it in the end zone that it's supposed to be in, all right? The end zone we're trying to score. I know we're being a little bit facetious here, but the bottom line is take care of the football and everything else should flow from there. Quick lesson, never ask the play-by-play -play <laughs> guy a question. Hey, you're my partner. I know you're right there with me. Take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. He lost two there, and it's third down. Oftentimes when a guy has a game like this, he's going to take his offensive line out to dinner afterwards. But after a play like that, he may tell him, instead of getting the steaks, guys, we might have to go for the hot dogs. Play clock's running down. Kill, kill. And the play clock running very low, so Dan Quinn decides to call for a timeout. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On third down, Ryan. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him. But he usually has the focus to haul that one in. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. And the back goes into motion. Play clock winding down. On oh, a delay of game there, they could not get the playoff in time. Frustrating for the head coach, frustrating for the offense. Sometimes you have to get the play call in a little bit quicker. Still fourth down. Here's Matt Bosher now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. That's taken on the 25. Shreds him with a stiff arm. A nice job on the return there. 16 yards. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. Now here's the Falcons defense getting set to go again. And a tight ball game here, and in these close ones, every drive becomes magnified. And we don't want to overuse the word critical, but it feels that way as they head out there for this possession. They need to get the ball back and give their offense a chance to get them totally back into this game. We'll see if the defense can do just that here. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And the Falcons grab it. Now that's frustrating for an offensive staff. They spent a lot of time preaching ball security and how to tuck the ball away in traffic. Instead, he's got it out there like a loaf of bread, and he's stripped. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Back now in Atlanta. It's the Falcons. They've got the football. They've got the lead as we get set to start the fourth. Coleman now. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Grady Jarrett with the tackle. So second down was a run play. Now let's see what they do on third. Get up! 
In motion right is Robinson. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork, and add a little, little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Freeman, the lone man in the backfield. Sanu, the man in motion left. Time running out here on the play clock. Now with just one second showing on the play clock, we're going to get a timeout. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. Here's Freeman. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. 11 yards on the pickup, and it'll be first down Atlanta. And that's how you run the football and run it successfully. Big-time chunk of yardage picked up, but why? Offensive Hyman won at the point of attack. Their leverage way better than the defenders. The low man wins when you're getting underneath and trying to move people. That's exactly what happened on that play. The offensive line moved the defensive front, created space, and the end result, a fantastic run. Freeman again. A strong running. <laughs> Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Desmond Trufant there making the tackle. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. This is Freeman. And he'll get it down here. And now a timeout defensively by the Falcons. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Freeman. And some good tackling there as he... And the Falcons are going to use another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Now a handoff. It's Freeman. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. On third down, Devontae Freeman. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there. So barring something extraordinary, something crazy here in the closing stages, that field goal should just about put this one on ice. Brandon, this would be a great win for...
such a phenomenal bluff. I want you to be my lead, my Don't have to take it on the cover, just on this on the bells are ringing. People singing, rice is throwing flower, bringing ding a ling a ling. The honeymoon is when we go in, and I take you to a place that you didn't even know exists. What's your wish? Then I have time for tower and bombers. Shot us in the basement party, yeah. Turn into the greatest party, yeah. Never see my baby coming. Just once and we went out. Yeah. And my love is tripping. Yeah. Now I feel my body drifting. Yeah. Baby girl, she got me lifted. Your mind tripping. to be its final season as an NFL stadium. There's a look at the Georgia Dome here in Atlanta. Coming up, we've got what can only be described as a mirror Thank you. 
Here's Bosher to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. Fighting throw. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. And they'll send the tight end in motion here. And the big tight end shifting around. On first down, Ryan. He completes it to Julio Jones. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And a nice little pass and catch there on the corner route. Set up very well by the receiver with a head and shoulder fake inside before he comes back downhill to his quarterback. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him six on the play, and that'll bring up a third and one. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Again, they'll run with Freeman. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. And, partner, in a lot of short yardage situations, you'll see the linebackers step up into the gaps, what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, to make sure they take away all spaces, all creases. That one worked really well for them. They only needed a yard. Instead, went backwards. They'll run it. Freeman. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. Sanu, the man in motion left. To throw is Ryan. This will be caught at about the three. They get 25 yards out of that one. And the Falcons are going to have a first and goal. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. On the keeper, and he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. Matt Ryan scoring on the sneak from a yard out. And the Falcons have taken the early lead. That's just a solid, methodical drive to start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts the defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. Atlanta now coming out on the field. together here from the D-line. They'll try and run for the first time with Freeman. And he powers his way up past the 30. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. So the offense readies for a second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. Now Ryan going to give it to Freeman. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. 
Well, they know how to protect the pass, but sometimes cornerbacks, they can also stop the run, can't they? Is that what we call a complete corner? Yeah, because we're so used to these guys just being defenders in the pass game. How about the guys who can come up and make the tackles? That's what we just saw there for no gain, too. So the offense needing four yards. It's third down. From the gun on third down, Ryan forced out to his left. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. A pickup of five that time and a first down. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. Drops it off for Coleman. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. On second down, here's Ryan. Dancing to his left. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. On first and ten, it's Ryan. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well. And every now and then, they don't come down with the football. Ryan. Buying time to his left. Now he'll let it go on the... Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked off by Robert Alford. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. From the gun, it's Ryan. Connects with Sanu right side. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Here's Matt Bosher now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Here's Matt Bosher now, as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Taken right at the 35.
Whether your offense is struggling or not, they always appreciate a big punt return. A short field to work with tends to make an offense that much better. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. Now Ryan on first down. Steps away to his left and avoids the contact by sliding. It's a gain of seven, and it'll bring up a second down. Quarterback saw the defenders coming, made the smart move, protected himself. It could have lowered his head and tried to pick up additional yardage that way, but that's not smart for a quarterback. They need him around to throw the football, slide in feet first, and get the protection afforded to him. Second down. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And now a timeout defensively by the Falcons. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And they'll run it here. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And the Falcons going to use another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. They'll run it now out of the gun. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Now hang on here, timeout called, timeout called by the defense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Instead, it's fourth down. The Falcons will call on Matt Bryant for the field goal try. And the kick for the 41-year-old is up and good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. Certainly their offense has sputtered here a little bit in the first half as they finally do get on the board, but they only have three. Well, at least it eases the frustration a bit, doesn't it? Be able to get some points on the board, feel a little bit better about themselves as they go into the locker room and try and regroup. the ball downfield but when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that and have explosive plays that's often the difference in winning and losing those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance that'll drive a team towards a victory the defensive line disperses a little bit here maybe expecting a pass they'll put two receivers left two to the right On second down, Ryan. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. Really good job by the offense there. Every second counts right now. So for them to get out of bounds and save some time, that's a nice move. 
And the 14-year trusty veteran able to knock it through. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense and over the post. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Gabriel, the man in motion. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. They'll run it now out of the gun. Shreds the tackle, and he is going to lose yardage here. They'll break the huddle here and go for it. This is fourth down. The slot man in motion right. They'll indeed go for it with Ryan. He's going to air one out. And this is incomplete. Boy, a curious decision to go for it. Doesn't pan out. And the Falcons will take control of the football in great field position. A gutsy decision there at this stage in the second half in their own territory and a decision that they might regret. Can't wait for the post-mortem. You know, this post-game press conference because the questions are going to come fast and furious about this decision, no matter how the, how the game turns out, right? What were you thinking there? Why? Did you have a certain play call? Did, were you confident in your defense? Oh, yeah. Why? <laughs> it's yeah. going to keep coming up. Yeah, no matter the scoreboard, just tough to justify. Second down, here's Ryan. Flush to his right. And he's just going to throw this one out of bounds here. Nowhere to go with it. Incomplete. So a ways to go here on third and ten. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. From the gun on third down, Ryan. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first one. This from 44 yards out now. And Bryant's kick is good. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So put another three on the board. And all things considered, a good opening drive here to begin the third quarter. It sure was. I think as a head coach, you're happy to come out and put a little drive together, take the three points, and build on your lead. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three. But this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. 
And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened. You think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Slot man moves right. Ryan. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. And they're going to speed things up here. Gabriel, the man in motion. Ryan. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. It's a gain of six on the play. And it's a second down. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Here's Ryan to throw. Going underneath, it's Coleman. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. It appears they found something that's working, and they keep going back to it. I guess you can actually say he has the hot hands now, doesn't he? Yeah, well, it's one thing to hit your guy to the backfield once, hit him a couple times. Yeah, you're right, maybe they're onto something. And I think a lot of that is simply, if you get it to him in space, more times than not, He's going to get more yardage than you expect out of each play. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. And now they're in the hurry up. Ryan will throw again. Finding time. Caught out left side by Robinson. Back now in Atlanta. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Throwing again. Ryan drops it off for Coleman. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second and goal. Shift together here from the D-line. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Here's Ryan. Eluding, and he will score. Touchdown, Falcons. Matt Ryan punching it in from a yard away. And the Falcons are in a score. So they fought half the battle here, but they're still down. Plenty of work still left for them, but they delivered in the first step in their comeback attempt. Now after the touchdown, it's Bosher to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Freeman, the lone man in the backfield. And he'll get it up the middle. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. I know you're trying to wring every yard out of a run, but I think nine yards there is ideal in this situation. Yeah, now next couple plays, you only need one yard. Keep that clock rolling with a lead here in the fourth. Yeah, what you're saying is maybe if it takes you one or two more runs to get the first down, that's extra time, extra plays. Really hurts the team on defense. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. Were we surprised a little bit? Second and one, they went quarterback sneak. I know it works, so it's not like I'm second guessing yeah. at all, but I thought they might go with something else there. No, I'm sitting here trying to think the last time I saw a second one sneak. I can't remember any. Yeah, it's a rare call because normally you're going to go ahead and use your back if you're going to run it or if you want to throw it, a little quick pop there. But in this case, just get in behind those big guys and pick up a first down. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. A good solid run there as we head towards the home stretch of this game. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Freeman 
It'll be a minimum pickup, and it will take us to the two-minute warning. And now a timeout defensively by the Falcons. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. going to use another timeout. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And an aggressive play call here. It looks like the offense is going to go for it on fourth down. Halfback sent in motion. They'll try and throw for it with Ryan. And that's caught by Tammy. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one. And they're able to pick up the conversion here on fourth down. When you have a guy who has mobility, bootlegging him out of the pocket is often a big-time call, especially on a fourth down play. It gives him a run-pass option. Yeah, but it's also gutsy, right, because you're exposing your quarterback quite a bit. Yeah, there's no doubt about that one at all because on the bootleg, you've got to hope that the defensive ends or outside linebackers take the fake. If they don't, they're often right in the face of the guy trying to exit out. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They've got the lead by three late stages of the game. What's the message here? Just hang on to the football? Is it that simple? That's exactly right, because ball security is paramount. And you've got a small cushion. A field goal can tie you, but you don't even think that way. Just take care of the ball, close out the game. Will they close it out? We're about to find out. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. 